I was asking about Saika's decision to accept KPMG's resignation as the auditor. Yes, ma'am, we did accept um, KPMG's resignation as our auditors, having considered um, the possible perceived conflict that may arise with them being our auditors and um, Saika being the facilitator for the independent inquiry. Right. Uh, th this is quite interesting because uh, earlier on in the year, we uh, have seen some, some of the big uh, companies actually walk away from KPMG. And uh, my question would be, this is your trade. You are auditors, uh, rather uh, chartered accountants yourself. Uh, why did it take this long? Well, it did not ne necessarily take long. The matter has been considered as early as um, the moment the whole allegations about KPMG came about. And at that point in time, we're still setting up um, the inquiry. The board was of the view that the inquiry must do its work and conclude. And at the conclusion of the inquiry, the board would look at um, the findings from there and make a decision. Unfortunately, the commission, um, given its uh, magnitude of the work that it has to do, it has taken longer than it was anticipated. It was supposed to complete at the end of April, and now it's going until end of June. And um, um, both parties were, were of the view that, considering the stage at which the commission is at, it is in the best interest of both parties to actually go separate ways, so that um, the work can be done as independently as possible. Fanisa, talk to us about the current state of chartered accountancy or the, prof the profession in South Africa currently um, and really what Saika's role is to dealing with the challenges that you are seeing. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, yes, as the professional institute, we do acknowledge that our profession has gone through challenging times and part of what we are doing um, is looking at our governance processes in terms of how we can actually deal and publish some of the findings or some of the hearings that are going on. But um, more about that is also to get our members to recommit to the code that they have signed up for with the understanding that if members do not adhere to that code, um, we will no longer deal with it like in the past where it would be done in silence, but the bylaws should actually allow of us to actually publish and tell what has gone wrong in terms of their conduct. In addition to that, we are having engagements with our members and our stakeholders, starting with what we call courageous conversations, um, which is coming up in the next week, where we can meet as the profession as a whole and our stakeholders and actually look at um, what is it that we could have done better, both as a profession and as members, and how do we self-correct ourselves so that we uphold the trust uh, function that the public had um, had put on us. So we are having all those courageous conversations and we are engaging our members direct in terms of the commitment that they have made to the code of conduct of the of the of the profession. Fanny, so just to follow up on what you said there, the bylaws, do they include any form of criminal proceedings? I mean, if we look at the case of Steinhoff, um, a lot of the board of directors on that board were chartered accountants, but nothing has been done in terms of uh, a criminal liability for that fraud or the alleged corruption that we saw. Just to correct that statement, um, it might appear in the public that nothing has been done in relation to all the cases that our members are alleged to have been involved in. And, and part of the limitation was what could be said in the public and what could be said, which we have corrected. Coming back to a direct question of whether there are criminal proceedings that we can undertake, as you may know, we also work very closely with the criminal um, justice, whether it be the NPA or our regulator. And any of our members, after they have gone through the disciplinary process, should they be found guilty, and it's a matter of a criminal charge, they will be subjected to those um, bodies that can actually take them through the court system. Unfortunately, as an organization, we do not necessarily have those powers. So we do work with organizations that have got the powers to um, criminally charge people. But when they are found guilty and of a criminal nature, we do hand them over.
to the bodies that have got the right authority to put them through the justice system. Right, many thanks, Vanessa, for uh, sparing time to speak to us on that particular story that is uh, still developing, interesting uh, developments there indeed. That was Vanessa Lamola, who is the CEO for uh, Psycho 